prefer uh, the allegory of the cave, but Plato indicates the pure knowledge is not attainable due to human uh, condition of receiving the external world uh, mm. with the higher realm uh, within our senses. Uh, so what do you think about that? And is the true knowledge uh, pure fact of the thing possible and attainable to human beings? Oh, uh, well, um, there are many interpretations of the myth of the cave. But I mean, I think in the background, Plato did have this rather, and to me, slightly strange view that the only true objects of understanding were... Um, in a sense, extraterrestrial. The ordinary things around us, you could have beliefs about them, but you wouldn't have knowledge about them. Or you wouldn't have understanding of them. And to achieve understanding or knowledge with a capital K, um, you had to think in terms of another world. So Plato is emphatically another worldly philosopher. Um, there's a, a famous picture by Raphael of the School of Athens, and Plato is standing there with his fin finger up, looking at the heavens, and Aristotle is standing there with his finger down, looking at the earth. Um, so Plato had this sort of, um, well, depends on your view, but you might call it a fantasy of your knowledge escaping from the, it's, 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 um, uh, its topics in the world and entering a sort of pure realm, a pure realm of pure thought. Um, and he developed, I mean, that's one of the motivations, I think, or the, uh, the impetus behind the myth of the cave, where the seer, the, the person with understanding, escapes from the cave in which everybody else is um, condemned to exist. Uh, and sees the light, sees the sun. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's a myth. It's, um, I think it's, it's, it's liked by people who have a, for example, a religious temperament mm -hmm. because you could see the escape from the world to the other um, domain the domain of the sun as some kind of acquaintance with God or something like that. Um, it's not plain that that was Plato's intention because one of the things that's very clear in the Republic is that to be qualified to ascend from the cave, mm -hmm. you don't just have to be sort of pure and holy and so on you have to have a huge education in mathematics and you have to have a um, many years of philosophy, mathematics, education. You have to be sequestered from other people, isolated from other people. There's a kind of whole discipline involved. Um, and that's not really emphasized by people who give it a religious um, sort of application because they like to think that um, being holy is, as it were, quite easy. You don't need 10 years of mathematics. Um, and, uh, and that's not true to Plato. So Plato seems much more to have had a, a mathematical model in mind. The, the understanding that you get when you left the cave was an understanding of something like the laws of nature, of a kind of a mathematical language in which to understand the way things happened. And that's not really escaping from the cave, it's just coming back to the cave with better tools for dealing with it. <laughs> so, Professor, uh, as a person who devoted himself to study on the truth, uh, what does it mean uh, for you? And is the game of, uh, is it game of our perception? Or is it kind of a illusion that uh, does it uh, is it kind of an illusion that exists in our world? Um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask for that again. I didn't quite catch it. Okay, as a person who devoted himself to study on the truth, mm. uh, what does it mean for you, the truth? And uh, is it a game of our perception, 
or is it kind of an illusion or does it really exist in this uh, reality? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I take a very um, down-to-earth attitude to these things. Um, of course, they're truths that exist. It's a truth that today is Saturday. It's a truth that um, I'm living about half a mile from the nearest shop. Um, it's a truth that we're all in a room, well, different rooms, and so on and so on. There are lots and lots of common sense truths. They're perfectly good truths. It's a truth that I'm wearing shoes. <laughs> and even trousers, although Zoom doesn't show that. Um, so the, so the, there are plenty of everyday truths. I think when somebody says, or is described as having devoted themselves to truth, that always makes me a bit embarrassed because um, you could devote yourself to trivial truths. I mean, there are people who like quizzes. They, they amass lots and lots of silly, silly knowledge about you know who was the um, who was the best paid footballer in 2015 and that sort of thing. Um, so so it's just a question of finding something that's worth investigating, something that's important enough to to devote yourself to, um, not just to amassing truths for the sake of it. Um, now I, I mean that uh, I devoted myself to philosophy. Um, partly I enjoyed it, it was as simple as that at university. Um, I think I was, I was, I quite enjoyed arguing with, especially with my teachers. So, so and philosophy encourages that. Um, and I didn't have skills in things like painting or um, art or music, unfortunately. I wish I had, but I didn't. So it seemed to me, you know, that was the, pleasantest way I could think of spending my life. Um, and so I became an academic and fortunate enough to get jobs and so on. So it, it wasn't uh, anything very um, elevated or very um, something of which I was particularly proud. It's just, it uh, seemed a very pleasant path to take. <laughs> and it's proved it, it's a, been a very pleasant path to take even got me to Turkey on the odd occasion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, uh, my question is, as a modern philosopher, uh, you aim to widen the scope of people who are interested in philosophy. Mm -hmm. But, like, what is your main purpose about popularizing philosophy mm -hmm. or why do we need philosophy in our daily life mm -hmm. as a fundamental component? How can we use it? Mm -hmm. It's a very good question. Um, I, I, I think, I mean, I think I said earlier on, you know, that when you've got an education, you wouldn't be without it. It's, it becomes part of who you are. Um, and being interested in philosophy is part of who I am. Um, partly, I wrote those books um, as an educational um, aim, you know, to try and uh, not only tell people a little about what philosophers do, but to interest them in it and try and make these things accessible and something you can communicate. Um, I think I also believe that it's very, very important in, for example, politics, um, that people appreciate the power of ideas. Um, uh, John Maynard Keynes, the famous economist, said that practical men of business um, who pride themselves on not knowing any philosophy are often the slaves of defunct philosophers. <laughs> um, in other words, um, we, we're always in the grip of ideas, um, some good, some bad. Um, you know, uh, practical men who think, or practical women, who think, no, it's just a matter of, you know, tilling the ground, growing crops, having enough to eat, building houses, doing practical things. Um, I think they often forget that the people's ideas of what's just, what's fair, what's due to them, 
um, what's demanded of other people, um, what their relations with um, different uh, nations should be, whether we need the nation state at all. All these are things which can be discussed and thought about. And they have been discussed and thought about. So it's good to know the literature. It's good to know who said what and what the various positions have come to be. And I just find that my life would certainly be incredibly much poorer if I felt I had no, um, no historical understanding, no understanding of which arguments have swayed people like Hume or Kant or Russell or Mill. And uh, I, I, think, I think everybody's missing out. So I'm a little bit of an evangelist for philosophy, it's true. Um, but only in the same way that, say, somebody who derives enormous pleasure from music might be an evangelist for music. You know, people like um, Paul Tortelier or Stephen Osborne, great pianists, great cellists, instrumentalists, great singers. They often devote a lot of time to um, energizing students, getting pupils to follow in their footsteps because it's given them so much and they want to share it. And I think philosophy gave me so much that I wanted to share it. Well, Professor, how can we achieve to internalize philosophy then as a way of life rather than taking specialized academic education on it? Mm. Um, I think that if you do take a specialized academic education, um, it'll change your way of life very quickly. It changes your way of life probably in the first year. I used some, sometimes when I taught at Oxford and Cambridge, I thought that the difference between a student coming into a philosophy course and the student at the end of a year, that was the big difference. After that, the rest is more specialist and, you know, it's good for passing exams, but it's, it's not going to change your life in the same way as that first year changes your life. Because I think what you, what you should be taught in a good philosophy education is um, uh, you're taught a certain amount of care. Uh, you've got to be careful what you think and how you think it and how you express yourself. You're taught a certain amount of modesty. That is, uh, your first thoughts are probably not your best. Um, if the teacher's worthwhile and if the teaching's worthwhile, it's going to... Uh, make you realize that there's, uh, you know, a mountain to be climbed, there's a, there's a um, uh, improvement to be had. So you learn a certain amount of modesty, you learn a certain amount of um, cultural background to your own ideas. Um, people often take ideas for granted. Um, I mean, you know, uh, in, in our own time, ideas of gender which used to seem like common sense, have been made very problematic in all sorts of ways. Um, so, uh, so the ideas that we live with and the categories we just use unthinkingly can become problematic, can be made problematic. And the more you become an adept at thinking about things like that, I think the, the, the better you face life, I think. I agree with you. <laughs> yes. Thank you for your response. 